Hi everyone, my name is Lucas. Today I want to share with you guys two different meditative and contemplative practices that come from ancient Christian traditions that I like to do every day or as often as I can. Now, before I go any further, I would like to define the two terms that I used, which are meditation and contemplation. Nowadays, meditation is used as an umbrella term to refer to almost any practice involving the mind and attention, and is very often associated to Buddhist forms of meditation. In this video, I will be rather using the terms meditation and contemplation according to how they are defined by Dr. John Verveke, a professor of cognitive science at the University of Toronto in Canada. To put it briefly, a meditative practice is any practice where the objective is to train your ability to focus down into a singular object of attention and return to that object of attention whenever your mind wanders. Your object of attention may be something of the senses. For example, in Hawaiian Hakalau meditation, you might use an object in your field of vision to focus on that, and whenever your mind and your vision starts wandering off to other objects, you gently bring your sight back to the object you were focusing on. It might be your breath, like when you do forms of meditation that involve counting your breath. It might be sounds around you. And your object of attention can also be something in your mind, like a sentence that you repeat or a thought that you try to entertain. Meditative practices are not exclusively associated to Buddhist mindfulness practices, which are the most famous forms of mindfulness practices that we have today, but rather they have originated in various different times in different cultures, having arisen from different traditions. Every meditation will have different objectives associated to it that will depend on the culture it has arisen from. But most of them really have in common that aspect of you having to focus your attention down into a singular object of attention. And this has been proven by cognitive science to be an excellent form of training your awareness of yourself and of your surroundings. And the awareness that you train in these practices will also transfer into other aspects of your life. Contemplative practices, on the other hand, are kind of like at the other end of the spectrum from meditative practices. Instead of trying to put your attention down into a singular object of attention, you want to bring your attention up. What I mean by that is that you want to let your mind make associations freely. In a way that you practice your mind's capacity to make associations and connections between different areas. For me, my favorite example of a contemplative practice is playing music. When you are playing music, your mind will automatically start to make connections between the melodies and the harmonies that you are playing and different emotions, different, different memories, different events that happened in your life. And if you try to focus down from that only to look at the sheet music you were reading, you might remove the emotion and the singularity from your music. Rather, when playing music, you want to let these events, these memories, these emotions, these feelings guide you towards playing better. Though you also don't want to start daydreaming so much that you are not able to play your song anymore. One less advice that I'd like to give you before you begin to practice any meditative or contemplative practice by yourself is that you seek to understand its purpose beyond the purpose of being a practice to help you change the way you focus and change the way you practice your attention. That is because most of these practices evolved within different religions and cultures and even though now with a scientific point of view we can talk about them as practices to switch our attention or focus most of them also have a deeper spiritual meaning that may be to connect you to a particular kind of entity or to a particular spiritual state 
So understanding what you are getting into is quite important if you want to find a practice that fits with the rest of your beliefs and with the rest of your life. To say that a meditative practice or a contemplative practice has as its own only focus to help you drive your attention in a different way is the same than saying that you eat only to nourish your body. But food will actually have many aspects to it, a social aspect when you are eating with other people, it will have an aspect of taste and enjoyment. Each of these practices will bear the fruit they are intended to bear the best inside the context within the, which they were created. And thus, a Christian meditative and contemplative practice will work better for a person who lives in a Christian context and who practices the Christian faith. Now I'm going to show you how to do the Jesus prayer or hesychastic practice the way that I particularly do it. There are many different schools of thought about how to go on practicing the Jesus prayer. Most of them follow a very basic and simple rule and, and there isn't really any dogmatic way of going about it. As I was saying about the other meditative practices, the purpose of the Jesus prayer is also more than simply learning how to shift your focus to a singular object of attention. The purpose of the Jesus prayer is to learn how to cultivate deeply ingrained within yourself a sense of deep connection with God through the repetition of a short prayer. This short prayer normally takes a form which is adapted from the prayer of the publican seen in the Gospels. The usual form of the Jesus prayer is Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You can also use the Greek form which is Kyrie Jesu Christi eleison me. Now the way that you go about doing this practice is that you sit yourself in a position that to you is associated with prayer and with devotion and you may take a prayer rope if you have one of them or you can even use your fingers to count and you say this prayer repeatedly for a couple number of times. The number of times will vary from person to person. Uh, some monks are said to pray the Jesus prayer thousands of times, tens of thousands of times per day. If you want you can do only a hundred, you can do only thirty. Really the purpose is to create a practice that you will maintain to help you cultivate this feeling of inner connection with God and also to help you do as Paul said which is to practice unceasing prayer. So the Jesus prayer is something that you can do when you are waiting on a line or when you are sitting on a bus and it's a form of teaching yourself how to pray unceasingly and to cultivate deeper, deeper connection with God. So. You take your prayer row or whatever other tools to count that you have. You can also use a timer and you start saying your prayers. So you start, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And you continue on repeating this prayer steadfastly. When your mind wanders away from the prayer, when you start thinking about the things that you had to do during the day, when you start thinking about any things, you return to the prayer and you keep on saying the prayer until you have finished the amount of prayers that you set yourself to do during that time. It's not an easy practice and you have to accept that your mind will most definitely wander away a couple of times during a single sitting. The purpose is not to do a perfect sitting of Jesus' prayer. The purpose is for you to learn to come back to what you were focusing on each time you stray away. Once you have grown used to saying the Jesus' prayer out loud with your voice for a couple of times, you can go to the next level, which some monks call the prayer of the mind. This is when you pray your prayers silently using only your thoughts. At this point, 
you can start synchronizing your prayers with your breath. So when you breathe in, you can say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. And when you breathe out, have mercy on me, a sinner. Going on in that cyclical fashion. With time, as you practice this prayer more and more, you will need less and less words to convey the meaning of the prayer itself. The full format of the prayer, which is Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, may become shortened to a simple Jesus, mercy. The center of the Jesus prayer practice is really a focus on His holy name. And as you go on practicing this, there will come a time where you won't even need to use words in your head anymore to practice the Jesus prayer. And that's when you enter what is called the prayer of the heart. The prayer of the heart is something that takes some time to reach, and I haven't reached it myself. So be patient, do your own best, and remember that the purpose of this practice is really just for you to cultivate endless and unceasing prayer, as St. Paul would refer to it, and through that to learn how to have unceasing connection with God on your daily lives. And now I will show you guys the contemplative practice, which is Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina is a very, very old practice. Its name itself comes from the Latin, which means divine reading or holy reading. There are many ways to practice Lectio Divina, coming from different monastic traditions. The way that I practice it is quite a simple form of Lectio Divina that I learned through John's Verveke, John Verveke's channel, uh, mixed up with a little bit of the Catholic model of this practice. Lectio Divina is a four-step process. The first, which is called Lectio, which means reading in Latin. For this part, you will take a passage. Make it short, not too long, so that you won't get tired of reading it. Here I have selected Paul's writing on love, which is at 1 Corinthians 13. You will read the passage completely first, and you will try to read it with intention, with emotion, trying to put yourself in the skin of the author, of the person doing the speaking, trying to really embody what is being said as you are saying it, as if you were telling this as a story to someone. Yet I show you a more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became man, I put away childish things, for now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Once you finish the first step, which is Lectio, the reading of your passage, you go to the second step, which is called Meditatio. In that step, you are going to take a 
little piece, a single phrase or sentence of the passage you read that caught your attention. You don't need to explain why it caught your attention. You just need to choose whatever really catched your eye or your ears. And you are going to repeat that phrase over and over again. For example, in my case, that might be, and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. And you go on repeating what sounds the most, what is the most salient for your understanding. And you repeat it for a couple of times until your mind starts making connections with old memories of yours or starts trying to think and understand what does it mean for the greatest of these to be love. It's a bit like listening to music and starting to daydream about the music you are listening to or starting to start thinking deeply about the lyrics. It's just that you are choosing a small phrase, a small part of a text that you are reading and you are trying to go as deep into it as you can. And that's when the third step of Lectio Divina starts, which is oratio, with, which in Latin means prayer. You try to transform your daydreaming into a prayer, into a form of conversation with God about the thing that you are reading. You, are, you try to understand and try to imagine how it would be like to live out the message that is being sent by this passage. Try to imagine what would be the consequences of living in such a way. If you want, you can set a timer, so you will spend at least five minutes doing this, but not spend too long. Because once you have finished the, this third phase, which is oratio, you go into the fourth one, which is called contemplatio, or contemplation in Latin. The purpose of this fourth phase is to come back to earth, come back to the present moment, and with all that you have been thinking, all that you had been daydreaming and thinking and, and wondering about this small phrase, how can you apply it in your life? How can you make it relevant to your present moment? How can you successfully live out what is being presented by the text? So that is all for the Jesus prayer and for the Lecture Divina practices. I really hope you like the content of this video and I really hope I could provide you with some uh, tips and ideas of how you can go by practicing uh, the Jesus prayer and the uh, contemplation, the reading contemplation. I am no professional by any means in these practices, uh, but I really like to be able to share with you guys the things that I found useful in my path to learn how to do them. I wish you all a very blessed day and blessed life. Until next time.